on the computer. All right, I'm going to share the screen and get to your lesson. So, like I said, y equals blah, 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 whatever the hell it is. Here's y equals x squared. These are called functions. Okay, so now we're going to use a notation that involves an f with an x there. And it looks a lot like it's multiplication, but it's not. The way you read it is f of x. You're going to plug in x's and you're going to get y values, but we're not going to call them y values anymore. Okay, so you plug numbers in for x and you get numbers out. So if you want to think of it as input, output, you can kind of think of it that way. All right. So f of x and y are the same thing. Instead of a y, we use f of x. It's just a nice, it's a convenient no notation, but this is this is what they do in pre-calc. Okay, they start using f of x. This is the official definition. Now I want you to listen very carefully to this. I may at some point ask you to explain this in your own words. I'm going to be plugging x's in, but this is very special. Every time I put an x in, I only get out one, one y value. Now, what, what does that mean? I want you to think of it like a teleporter. I have this teleport machine. You can only put one person at a time. It's really small. So you put the one person in boop, and he's getting ready to teleport, but you can only teleport this person to one place at the same time. You can't teleport one dude to two different places. All right. The dude would die. So you can't put like X equal one and then get Y is five and Y is seven. It doesn't work that way. If you put one thing in X, you only get one Y out. You don't get two Y's, three Y's. It doesn't work that way. That's what makes a function a function. All right, one X in, one Y out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work a couple of examples of it. Cause this is what you need to see. You need to see me do a couple of questions and then you're gonna practice them. The worksheet will open up in the blackboard. I'm gonna write two now. The reason they use F F is for f function, <laughs> F for function, nothing for, you know, profane. So you have F, but they can use other letters. Sometimes they want to give you three functions. They'll call one F, one G and one H. They're just the name. All right. So I'm going to write two of them here. I'm going to write F of X equals, let's see, five minus three X. And I'm going to make one called G, G of X. My G got all messed up. G. And let's do this. So F of X, I'm going to say 5 minus 3X, G of X, negative X squared minus 4X minus 1. Hopefully you guys can see this better with the better camera. <laughs> now, I want you to understand you can plug anything into these functions. You can plug numbers, you can plug letters, and you can plug whatever the hell. Look, I'm gonna do F of smiley face. Ready? F of smiley face. Wherever you see X, you put smiley face. It doesn't matter what the hell you plug in there. Look, there, smiley face. All right, if I wanted to do say F of negative four, There was an X here, wherever the X is, you put that number. Parentheses got messed up. There we go. Negative and negative is plus. Three times four is 12. Now, what does it mean? It means that I put X equal negative four into my daily, my function F, and I got 17. That's all it means. This is what you do. You plug in a number, 4x, and you get a number out, y. Now, I'm going to tell you something I don't want to tell you, <laughs> only because other teachers might say this to you in the future. Look, you notice I call them letters because they're letters. I don't, I don't use you know, the word variable. I don't like that word. I like it because x is a letter. You think of it as a variable, though, because it varies. That's where the word variable comes from, meaning it constantly changes. Now, the, the number that you plug in, they call independent variable because you're free, right? The word independent means free. So you're free to choose what you plug in. You can plug in any number you want, any letter you want. So that's why what you plug in is called independent variable. The letter you get out 
depends on what you put in. So the one that comes out, the Y value, is called dependent variable. I will never use these terms. Just in case you're in another class one day, like if your cow teacher is like, oh, the independent variable, and you're sitting there going, oh, shit, man, my teacher never said nothing like that. I don't know what the hell that is. Well, you heard me say it, and you will remember anyway. Who cares? All right, so plug numbers in. I'm going to plug one into G just because it's a little harder. And then I'll show you that you can plug letters in. And then you can ask me questions, and then we're going to practice. Now, look, don't worry about trying to copy this down. This is the purpose of me trying to record it. I don't know how successfully it's going to work or <laughs> how they're going to look on YouTube, but let's try. You want to plug a negative in there? Let's do negative two. So I know my G looks a little funky, but whatever. So I'm going to plug negative two. Now, here's the thing. There's an X there and an X there. So everywhere there was an X, I have to put negative two. I have to put it here and I have to put it here. That's why I put the little parentheses there. Now you got to be really careful. Negative two times itself is four. But then this negative is waiting for it. It is waiting for this to come out, right? You got to drop the power. You can't hop the fence with the power on. So shut the power off. You get four and then hit it with that negative. The negative and the negative, two wrongs make a right. Pow. So let's see, I have a positive eight. I'm going to lose four and lose one. So I lose five altogether. So that I'm pretty sure eight minus five is three. So that's what G of negative two is. And again, all this means is that you had x is negative 2 and y is 3. That should look really familiar to you. At some point, we're going to be graphing all of this crap. And you know, you're going to you're going to have to plot points and stuff. Yeah, you're going to have your graphing calculator. Yay. But anyway, now I want to show you that you can plug letters in. I'm going to do it with the top one because I want to do the easy one and make you do the hard ones. I'm going to do an easier one. But so look, when, when you do this, you just have to be really careful and watch your signs. Sometimes it's really messy when you're plugging letters in, like you'll have F of X. And then I ask you to do F of X plus three. And you're like, but wait a minute, I already have an X. And you're replacing X with something else that has X. And it's really weird and confusing looking. And I, I that bothers me. I'm going to switch to the letter M to make it a little easier for you to grasp. So look, let's say I want to do F of M plus eight equal, annoying, equal. I'm used to writing in chalk. <laughs> so you have five minus three X. So I'm going to take five minus three and put parentheses here. What has to go here is this. I have to put M plus eight where X was. And it's weird. You're replacing a letter with another letter. And sometimes this letter is the same. Sometimes it's an X. And it's going to freak you out a little bit. But just deal with it. You do it. It's not that bad. So wherever you see X, you put whatever the hell I put here. If I put smiley face there, you put smiley face there. If I put a number there, you put a number there. You put whatever I give you where the X is. Now you got to distribute there, right? Here you got to hop the fence. Boop, boop, and say hello to everybody in the party, even if you don't like them. Negative 3M. M for, I do want to say moron, melon. Negative 3 times positive 8 is negative 24. Oh, this is going to be hard. I don't have a calculator, I'm afraid. All right, 5, take away 24. Okay, I need to use my fingers. The number's too big. I'm pretty sure that's negative 19, right? So I like to write the letter first. You don't have to. Negative 3M doesn't have anything to combine with. And I do 5, take away 24, and I get negative 19. So, you know, look, I didn't plug in a number. I plugged in a letter with a number. So what I got out was a letter with a number. This is whatever. This is, this is what it comes out to. You can't do anything about it. I mean, this is what you got. All right? So it's not, it's not hard. This is the easiest thing I will ever teach you. I promise it's going to get more difficult. Well. That's not necessarily a good thing, but you know, it's going to get more complex. This is, we have to start somewhere and this is where we start. We start by plugging in numbers for X and getting numbers out for Y. 
All right, so let me stop this.